So about a week ago, I did a live show where, amongst other topics, we discussed Anthony Joshua versus Dillian White. And I said that, in my opinion, I was favouring Anthony Joshua in that fight by a, a portion of about 80-20 in terms of the percentage stakes. Uh, essentially, I felt in brief that Joshua had shown more evidence of being a class act in a professional ring than Dillian White. I suggested that Joshua seemed to be a more professional, disciplined operator with more advanced boxing technique than Dillian White. And all in all, I came to the conclusion that whilst it was a competitive fight, most likely this wouldn't be the fight where the Joshua hype train is derailed, and most likely Anthony Joshua would prove victorious. If you're interested to hear more extended thoughts on that, please check out the live show which is still on my channel uh, and will remain there. Um, it's tied to, you know, Anthony Joshua vs. Dillian White is part of the title and it was uploaded in the last week or so prior to this video, so it shouldn't be too difficult for you to track down. Now, in this video, I'm going to take a more detailed focus on the fight rather than looking at a range of topics and discussing them back and forth with uh, the various people who tuned in. So, not only am I going to go into it in more detail, I'm also going to examine various points to consider that perhaps the typical boxing fan isn't looking at for this fight. In many ways, I think people are oversimplifying it. I'm hearing some Anthony Joshua fans say, you know, Anthony Joshua's the greatest thing since sliced bread, the fight will be over in seconds. I'm hearing some Dillian White fans saying, Anthony Joshua's a fraud, he's got a glass jaw, uh, you know, our man's going to cross him. Realistically, I think it's more complex than both of those schools of thought. And I think that there's more dynamics to examine behind the fight um, than simply suggesting that either man is going to win um, by a walkover. In my eyes, whilst I do favour Anthony Joshua in this matchup, it's competitive and I can see ways for both men to win. So I'm going to come to that and come to the dynamics that I think you should consider when making your judgement on this fight in just one moment. Now before I get there, let me start by saying who is Anthony Joshua in my mind? And this isn't who is Anthony Joshua, the man, the promotion, you know, the bandwagon. What has he shown us in the ring so far? Let me highlight that in brief. He's a big guy, six foot six, six foot seven. He's athletic. He seems to carry well above average power. He's got an excellent jab. His preference from my eyes is to keep opponents on the outside, throw long one toes and try and get the job done that way. Uh, criticism of him would be that he is relatively stiff, relatively upright, and potentially hasn't so well hasn't shown different elements to his game other than the the classic AJ one two from Reigns. Uh, that's not so he doesn't have those. Uh, at this stage, he's beaten Kevin Johnson, who in my mind, top fifty, top sixty heavyweight, that sort of level. Dillian White, who is he? Um, for me, at this point, the fighter Dillian White most resembles is like a lower level Derek Chisora. Dillian White's got upside, he could go higher than a Derek Chisora, but he hasn't shown anything in the ring to prove that just yet. Um, he seems to carry genuine power, especially with his, uh, with his hooks. Uh, he's not as big as Joshua. He's probably not athletic as Joshua. He's not got the range of Joshua. He's not as technically proficient as Joshua. His jab isn't as good. Um, like Derek Chidora, he seems to throw combinations of hooks to the head, to the body. You know, he, he comes for a fight. He's a very aggressive, come forward fighter. He's not necessarily a chess player from Reigns. He's someone who's going to try and get in close. Uh, in terms of Dillian White's best wins, if he's beaten top 100 opposition, would be in charitable. He has been in with some credible names. He... He knocked out Nascimento in round two or three, a guy who took Tyson Fury five rounds, took Eddie Chambers the distance. He's got some respectable form. Uh, most noticeably, he beat Anthony Joshua in the amateurs, I think, in one of Anthony's early fights. Um, people in boxing speak very, very highly of him. Peter Fury's given him a, a glowing review. James Ali Basir from the Klitschko camp has given him a, a glowing review. He's highly thought after. Uh, he's, you know, he, he seems to have an excellent attitude. Uh, kept the faith when going through a drugs ban and uh, he seems to be a guy 
who, whilst perhaps not the most technically proficient, is, is going in the right direction. So that's my thoughts briefly on who the two guys are at this stage. Uh, is the amateur win from White right, right relevant? Um, I don't think it's strictly relevant in the sense that fighter A beat fighter B in the amateurs. Can it be reversed? Um, possibly not, no. The only relevance here is not actually a technical boxing thing. It's something outside the ring. It's in the psychology of the fight. Will the build up, will the pressure, you know, you know White's going to bring it at the press conferences, you know he's an aggressive guy who's going to bring up the past and who's going to be telling Joshua what he's going to do to him and how he's going to knock him out again, how he's done it once, how he can do it before. Could that pressure affect Joshua in the build up to this fight? Could it put him out of his comfort zone for the first time? Could the sort of ice cold, gentle giant persona um, begin to sow cracks throughout the build up to this press conference, you know? Uh, fighters can expend a lot of nervous energy in the lead up to a fight and uh, you know could that be an effect in a matchup like this possibly so I think that's the first thing to consider here the amateur win of White over Joshua I don't think that strictly means that White's got the tools to beat Joshua again I don't think it's as simple that he's, he's beaten him once it's going to be easy for him to do it again I do think that if there's any sort of ground to be gained by that win it comes in the form of a psychological advantage as opposed to anything else. Another thing I think so you should consider is um, Dillian White's chin versus Anthony Joshua's stamina. I'll take that as a separate point. Dillian White by all accounts has an excellent chin. I've heard about it from his sparring sessions, I've heard about it from various trainers he's worked with. Uh, people have commented on my videos that they followed him in K1 and MMA before he was doing boxing and he'd never been stopped there. He'd shown an excellent chin throughout his career in that sport as well. Uh, we've never seen him dropped and hurt in the boxing ring and he, he seems to have a sturdy jawline. Having said that, he hasn't necessarily been in with a puncher like Anthony Joshua so far in his professional career. So he's proved an excellent chin but at a certain level. Now against Anthony Joshua, you know, who's probably top 30 in the world level, uh, has he got an excellent chin at that grade? We shall see. And that's a big question going into the fight. How much do you rate Dillian White's chin? Because I do think he's going to have to take punches in this fight. You know, for Dillian White to be successful, he's going to have to come into reins. He's going to have to get inside that Joshua jab. You know, Joshua's the longer, rangier individual, and White's going to have to get up close to be effective. So he's going to have to take risks. He's going to have to, you know wade through that long Joshua 1-2 and he's probably going to have to sew a chin. So how much do you rate Dillian White's chin? Conversely, if you do rate Dillian White's chin, the next question is how much do you rate Anthony Joshua's stamina? Because if Dillian White has an excellent chin and if Dillian White can withstand the punishment of Anthony Joshua and take the fight deep, we've only seen Joshua go three rounds I think in a pro ring. What if this fight goes to rounds 8, round 9, round 10? How will Joshua cope with that? With a guy like Dillian White, who's a presser fighter, who's going to be on his chest, who's going to be an unpleasant guy to deal with, how will Anthony Joshua's stamina hold up? So I think that's a really important dynamic to this fight. Do you rate Dillian White's chin? And if you do, and it seems that most people do, how confident are you in Anthony Joshua's stamina? You know, I had a discussion with this over somebody in on one of my videos the other day. I made the comment that I was suspicious of Anthony Joshua's stamina. Um, and they said, Joshua was such an athlete, didn't you see on Superstars when he ran 100 metres in 11 seconds? And that's all well and good. Joshua was clearly an athlete. But running 100 metres over 11 seconds is about explosiveness. It's about speed. It's about athleticism. And he's clearly got that. But boxing isn't a sport that's won over 11 seconds. At the highest level, it's won over 36 minutes. And will that muscle mass affect him, you know, over 36 minutes. Um, I was speaking to uh, uh, my friend Ultratech Sports earlier today and he was saying uh, he, he, he saw Anthony Joshua gassing even in the Kevin Johnson fight. I must admit I didn't see that so noticeably as he, he reckons he did. But are there potential stamina concerns with Anthony Joshua? I mean there are with David Price, there are with Frank Bruno, you know, such big heavily muscled guys aren't really accustomed to fighting for such a long period of time. So if Dillian White's got an excellent chin, which he supposedly has, 
You know, he's been sparring with Klitschko. He's been competing in other combat sports. He seems to have a very, very sturdy jaw. If you back his chin, how do you rate Joshua's stamina? So point one is the psychology. Point two is the white chin versus the AJ stamina. Point three is the white power, Dillian White's power, versus Anthony Joshua's chin. How much do you rate Dillian White's power? He seems to be genuinely a heavy-handed guy. Now, as I've often said, it's quite easy to appear to be a heavy-handed guy when you're operating at relatively low levels. I mean, look at a guy like Keith Furman, for example, knocking everyone out in devastating fashion, stepped up and fought his first fringe-level fighter, Leonard Bundu, suddenly it goes the distance. Sergei Kovalev, pound for pound, probably the hardest puncher in the sport, steps up to world level against Bernard Hopkins, suddenly he goes the distance. The fact that Dillian White's shown this immense power at the Nascimento level of the game doesn't necessarily show that he'll show it at the top level of the game. But early indications are good. Like Anthony Joshua, he seems to carry immense power. So, the question you've got to ask yourself is how much do you rate the Dillian White power? Now, if you think Dillian White is a big power puncher, Linked to that, you have to ask, what do you rate the Anthony Joshua chin? Because let's be honest, Anthony Joshua has shown nothing so far to suggest he's a defensive wizard in the real ring. In fact, if you watch some of his amateur tapes, it looks quite the opposite to that. So, at some point in Anthony Joshua's career, he is going to be hit. So far, he hasn't taken a clean punch from someone who can really hit. And it could be that the first time that happens to him in a pro ring is Dillian White. And we know that Dillian White dropped him and hurt him badly in the amateurs. Could it happen again in the pros? Possibly. So, do you rate Dillian White's power? And if so, are you convinced of Anthony Joshua's chin? It's just a dynamic to consider. Now, moving on from that, we've discussed some of the, the more obvious points. Um, another thing that I want to bring into play is the fact that Dillian White will be Anthony Joshua's first opponent who is, we're not first undefeated opponent because I think Joshua fought Emmanuel Le Leo in his first fight who was 7-0 but let's be honest, Emmanuel Le Leo was a disgrace to boxing um, you know, he, he, he was not a ha I'd hate to see the seven opponents he beat, let's put it that way Dillian White is a proper prospect he's an undefeated fighter serious ambitions of him of his own you know he wants to go somewhere in this sport he wants it to be a career a future for him and that brings a different kind of dynamic he's got ambitions of his own he's not like kevin johnson in the autumn of his career turning up for a payday he's not like michael sprott who's lost 20 20 or so fights you know he's not like paul butlin who's got a losing record you know the list goes on doesn't it i mean Dillian White is coming to the ring with a chance of making himself an overnight superstar if he wins this fight. You know, if Dillian White wins this fight, he'll get the deal with Eddie Hearn probably. He'll be talked about as the biggest threat to Vladimir Klitschko. You know, had Michael Sprott upset Anthony Joshua, it would simply be that Anthony Joshua was a hype job. But if Dillian White upsets Anthony Joshua, then suddenly the momentum could shift and Dillian White could be, you know, the next all-time great of the casual fans. Um, so it's an interesting dynamic, that. My point is that Joshua has never fought someone who, in my opinion, has truly come to win. He's fought opponents who've tried to sort of stay on the outside, be tentative. He's fought opponents who are scared of him. I don't necessarily see that in Dillian White. I see Dillian coming forward. I see Dillian bringing it to him. And I think that dynamic of being a young, hungry, undefeated guy brings a different test to things like that. Joshua's experience in his career so far. Now point five, and it's very much linked to point four, is the style of Dillian White. Now, I handle this in two separate points. Okay, point, point, point five, let's talk about the range. Anthony Joshua, for me, is a guy who's very reliant on range. He likes, like Vladimir Klitschko, he very, very much works off his jab. Everything stems from the jab. He likes to keep the opponent on the outside of the jab, right on the end of the jab, and work off it, throwing his big right hand. He likes to back his opponents up to the ropes. He likes to be on the front foot. 
He likes to be the bigger man in there. He likes to be a bit of a bully in the ring and sort of use battering ram punches uh, where he's in range, but they're out of range. Um, yeah, that's his, his tactic. For me, so far, he's been a fighter who's been relatively reliant on maintaining that range. I'm yet to see evidence of an inside game from Anthony Joshua. Um, I'm yet to see evidence of Anthony Dos Joshua dealing with a, a really good mover who can kind of keep outside his jab. Now, if I was Dillian White, one of the key things I'd be looking at in this fight is not allowing Anthony Joshua to settle into his reins. Because if you do that, you're in big trouble. Dillian White will lose if he gets into a jabbing contest with Anthony Joshua. Dillian White will lose if he spends most of the fight with his back to the ropes on the end of the Joshua 1-2. So what Dillian White has got to do is work out ways of mixing up the reins. Now looking at White as a fighter, as I say, he can't out-jab Joshua. I also don't think he can stay on the outside and outmaneuver Joshua and stay on the outside of his jab. So I think he's going to have to come inside. He's going to have to rush Joshua. He's going to have to get on his chest. And he's going to have to make this a fight in a phone booth. He's going to have to make Joshua give up his natural advantages of length and technique. And he's going to have to take this to the trenches. If he can do that, it becomes very interesting. Because it means that we're going to have to see different sides to Joshua's game. And if he could do that, I would suggest it becomes a 50-50 fight, frankly. I mean, I wouldn't bet on Dillian White to win this fight. However, I would have my computer on with bet in play available. And if from round one, round two, Joshua's, uh, White's on the inside of Joshua, landing punches up close, then at that stage, potentially, it is worth considering White in a bet in play fashion. Because, let me say, if White can manage to get under the Joshua jab and get into range and suck this into a wall, then Joshua's advantages go out the window. And I think Joshua's extremely reliant on range. So I think that's a very key dynamic in this fight and a key one to consider. Do you think White can get inside of the Joshua jab? And that really could be the, uh, the be all and end all. Now point six, and it is intimately linked with point five, is Joshua's back foot game, Joshua's performance under compressor and Joshua's defensive capability. I watched the uh, Joshua documentary that was on ITV4 and I must say, I was not impressed looking back at some of his amateur fights in the Olympics. It seemed to me that he panicked, froze, and didn't really know what to do when opponents came forward on him. He settles into quite a nice rhythm, and he's quite calm and composed when he's the aggressor, when he's moving forward, when things are on his terms. I've already talked about his reliance on reins. But for me, when he gets into a firefight, when someone's hitting back, and when he's not able to control that range, he struggles. He looks less refined. He looks a lot greener. Now, Dillian White, I think, I've already talked about him bringing the fight on the inside, but I think it needs to go a step further than that. I want Dillian White to try and push Anthony Joshua back. Yeah, I want Dillian White to put him on his back foot. I want Dillian White to put Joshua with his back up against the ropes. I want Dillian White to make it really, really awkward for Joshua. I want Joshua to have to take a step back and then Dillian White to close the reins automatically um, you know, and be up on Anthony Joshua's chest. That's how I think this fight should go. And that's what I'd be planning to do if I, Dillian White, with his style and his capabilities. Um, that's the momentum that I'd look to bring to the table. For me, there are a lot of unknowns about Anthony Joshua. And whilst Dillian White may not be the man to expose those unknowns and fully ask questions of Anthony Joshua, there are certain elements to his game which do make me think he's got a chance in this fight and is a live underdog. The Joshua back foot game, how he deals under pressure, the Joshua inside game are all unknown quantities. And it's fair to say that all the promise from Joshua has come on the front foot when allowed to dictate from reins. So White must take that dynamic away from him. White must push him back, test out his back foot game, test out his inside game. You know, fundamentally, Joshua is a tall, rangy guy who generates power from reins. If White is only one foot away from him, Joshua is not going to be able to hit him as hard as if White is right at the end of a 1-2 combination. For defensive and offensive purposes, White needs to get close. He needs to get under that jab. He needs to bob and weave like a 
a David Tour and uh, get inside of that jab, close down the reins and make things horrible for Anthony Joshua in that. If he can do that, and if his chin can take a, a hit, it becomes very, very interesting. And at that stage, the fight becomes 50-50, in my opinion. Um, you know, we yet to see the Joshua chin. We yet to see the Joshua stamina. We yet to see the Joshua back foot game. We yet to see the Joshua defence. Um, we yet to see Joshua on the inside. And if White can achieve those goals and come out on top on these points that I've highlighted, then I think he's got a realistic chance of causing the upset. If he gets a taste for the Anthony Joshua power early and decides to stay on the outside and fight a more tentative, cautious battle, then it's only going one way. If he decides to try and jab it out with Anthony Joshua, then it's only going one way. But he's got a chance if he makes things difficult and if he takes Anthony Joshua out of his stride. For me, what Dillian White do, must do is almost less about what Dillian White brings to the table. It's almost more about what Anthony Joshua doesn't bring to the table at this stage. Dillian White's got to take the game away from Anthony Joshua, not let him control things, and then it becomes even. Now, as I say, those are the points to consider. Those are factors that I think make this fight interesting, and those are the factors which is why I, that I believe make this fight a relatively complex puzzle to solve. And I think people are, uh, are wrong to oversimplify it by just picking your man to win with ease. I think it's a more complex equation than that. Um, all in all, I'd still favour Joshua 80 to 20. The timing is right for Joshua. He's got a lot of momentum. He's coming off the best win. The timing seems to be wrong for Dillian White. He... It, you know, he's got a hand injury, he's been inactive, his trainer's suffered a hit and run. Um, you know, he hasn't had the level of opposition, he hasn't had the you know, electric recent fight that Anthony Joshua's had. You know, the timing is not spot on for Dillian White, the timing is spot on for Anthony Joshua. I also think Anthony Joshua has improved markedly um, of late. You know, I've seen huge improvements in Joshua's game. Less robotic, um, very disciplined more sort of classic technical boxing than I see from Dillian White. Um, Joshua's got a size advantage, he's got a reach advantage. Um, the likelihood is, in my opinion, that Joshua does take this fight. But I think after the first round of this fight, if White shows up and if he's got a shrewd game plan and if he can make certain adjustments tailored specifically for Anthony Joshua. I think by the end of this first round, we could be looking at a 50-50 fight. Let me know your thoughts. As always, keen to discuss. Many thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed this, please give me the thumbs up on this video. Please click subscribe so you don't miss any of my further stuff. Thanks for watching.